Hi you guys, it's Jennifer and welcome back to My Flagstaff Home. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own mozzarella cheese. Yes, yes, you can do this. So I hope you'll join me. Be sure to subscribe to My Flagstaff Home. Okay you guys, yes, you can make your own mozzarella cheese and it is so delicious. So there are a few things that you'll need to get ahead of time in order to do this, but let me go through the ingredients. So first of all, you start with a gallon of milk. You can use 1% milk, whole milk, whatever you want, but the most important thing to remember is that it must not be ultra pasteurized. So if you look on the label, if it says ultra pasteurized, do not use it. If it says pasteurized, that's fine, in some cases, some, and some people will use raw milk or organic milk. I just use regular, I mean, it's just Lucerne is the brand. Um, but I find that the milk doesn't always form curd quite as well as it should. And the reason this has happened is that in, in recent years, part of the, the requirements for milk have kind of increased. So what used to be considered ultra pasteurized is now what pasteurized is. And ultra pasteurized is, is way more um, treated. And so it kind of kills off a lot of the good bacteria that you need in order to be able to form curd for the cheese. So there is a very important ingredient that you need so that you can get the right kind of curd forming. This is a product called calcium chloride. And all you have to do is put a quarter, a quarter of a teaspoon into a gallon of milk. You have to let it sit for at least an hour, kind of gently stir it in, not a whole bunch, just so that it mixes in with the milk. And then you could just pour your milk into the pot where you're gonna be making it, mix in the calcium chloride, and then just let it sit for at least an hour. What I did with mine, and this is a good thing to do as well, if you really wanna make sure your milk is in good shape, is just open the milk, put in your calcium chloride, kind of gently go back and forth with it a couple of times, and then just put it in your refrigerator overnight. And that way it will have plenty of time to sort of repair what's been killed off by the pasteurizing process. <clears throat> in addition to that, you need some rennet. And rennet comes in liquid or in tablets. I use tablets. You can also get animal rennet or vegetable rennet. I have only ever used vegetable rennet, and I've just heard, I've read, that, veg that um, animal rennet has a, a distinct flavor that's not the most pleasant, and so people tend to use that in stronger cheeses or in cheeses that have to be aged for quite a long time. And so I've always made really mild cheeses and, and vegetable rennet apparently is fine for, for those aged cheeses as well. So I'm not exactly sure why people would use animal rennet, but, but especially for this kind of cheese, for mozzarella with a mild flavor, you wanna use vegetable rennet. If you're using um, the tablet, you just need to use a quarter of a tablet and then the rest of it you can store in, in a Ziploc bag in in a freezer, so it needs to be kept in a freezer. You also need some citric acid and you need some non-chlorinated cool water and then an optional thing, but it's not optional for me, is cheese salt. And uh, cheese salt is just a really, really fine salt. So you can find it, you can find it online just like you can find any of these ingredients online. But uh, one of my favorite places, my favorite place actually, is the New England Cheese Making Company. And so I'll put a link to it in the space below. And they also have tons of recipes for different kinds of cheese. So I'm going to start by taking my quarter tablet of vegetable rennet and put it into a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water, and we just want that to dissolve. So you're gonna go ahead and kind of get some of these things prepped ahead of time because when you're doing the cheese, we're working with temperature, and it's not that you really have to work terribly fast, but you do have to mind your temperature. So it's a good idea to get some of these things done in advance. So we've just dissolved the tablet of rennet in there, and that will be ready to use. Next, you're going to take one and a half teaspoons of citric acid 
and you're going to mix it into a cup of non-chlorinated pool water. And what you also need is a thermometer, preferably with a long stick on it um, and a clip so you can hook it to the pot. But if you just have a handheld one, that's fine too. And the final thing you need are some gloves to work with when you're stretching the cheese, it's hot. And all you need are some kitchen gloves, like for dishwashing. And if you do get these, make sure you keep them in a place that's with your cheese making stuff or maybe mark up on the, um, up on the arm, you know, take a Sharpie and write cheese making or something so that these are not used for other things. You wanna keep them only for making cheese. Okay, so now we're gonna get started. We're going to take the cup of chlor non-chlorinated water that has citric acid in it and we're gonna pour it into the pot. And you're just gonna use a, you know, just a large soup pot. And then next you're gonna take your gallon of milk. Remember, this has been treated with a quarter teaspoon of calcium chloride so that curd will form better. You're gonna pour this into your pot. And you're gonna give it a good stir because you really want your citric acid to mix in well with this. So give it a good stir. And now is the time where you're going to start heating it up. You don't, you, you don't wanna scald the milk, so you don't wanna heat it too fast, but at the beginning when the, when the milk is cold, um, you can, you know, turn it up to, you wanna stir it. And you wanna get this up to 90 degrees. Now 90 degrees is not too terribly hot. So let's see where we are with our beginning temperature. This is at oh, about 58 degrees. So we need to go up to 90. And this is where having one of these kind of um, thermometers really works well because you can just clip it onto the side and, and then while you're stirring, you can just kind of check instead of having to go back with your thermometer over and over and check. So I, like I said, I put it at, on a high heat, but I stir it a lot. If you're not going to be wanting to, well, you, I was going to say if, you're not, if you don't want to babysit it, put it at a lower temperature, but it's kind of a good idea to babysit the, the cheese at all of its stages. For your thermometer, you don't use a candy thermometer. You actually can't use one because candy th thermometers typically go, don't go down to very low temperatures. They measure hotter things. And so when you're measuring things that are like 90 degrees or 80 degrees or 110, which is kind of what you do when you're making cheese, you need one that goes down lower than that. So just make sure that you have one that measures those around those temperatures. Okay, so we're getting close to 90 degrees and I like to read ahead on the recipe during the stages where I'm doing a lot of waiting just so I make sure that I'm, I'm ready for the step. And so when this one hits 90 degrees, we're gonna add in the dissolved rennet and then we remove it from the heat. So don't just turn the heat off, actually move it over to a different place on your stove and you're gonna, we're gonna cover it um, with a lid and let it sit undisturbed for, um, for five minutes. But once, I mean, we don't bother it once we've um, added the rennet, but when we put the rennet in, we actually have to vigorously stir it for about 30 seconds. So we are actually at 90 degrees right now, so I'm gonna move it over here and take my animal rennet mixture, pour that in. So for about 30 seconds, and now I'm gonna put the lid on it and we're gonna leave it for five minutes. I'm not gonna to touch it, just gonna leave it for five minutes and during this five minutes, the curd should form. Fingers crossed. All right, so five minutes. <laughs> it's been five minutes. And sometimes, I, I was crossing my fingers because sometimes it doesn't form curd correctly and it could be because of your milk and it could be because of the calcium chloride and and the great thing though is that over at cheesemaking.com the new england cheese making company they have uh troubleshooting so if you if it doesn't work you can always go over 
and uh, check out what some of your issues might be. That's when I actually switched to putting calcium chloride in my milk ahead of time. But let's see if it has formed curd. So it has, but it's actually not pulling away. Uh, there's, uh, you can see pictures when people take their fingers and they kind of pull the curd away from the edge of the pot and they, you can see the whey and the curd separated. And mine's not separating quite like, oh yeah, I guess it is. It's just kind of cloudier. So then um, I'll pop in a picture for you though. Then you want to take a knife, a long one that will go to the bottom of your pot, but try not to go all the way and scrape the bottom of your pot or you'll ruin your pot. But what you're gonna do is you're actually just gonna cut the curd. And so you go through and make vertical, vertical stripes. So we made vertical passes and now I'm gonna go and make passes with the knife in the other direction. So you're just cutting the curd into pieces. Okay, and you can even do it where you're going diagonally, but, um, but that should do it. So the next step is to put it back on your burner again, and you wanna heat it back up to 105 degrees. Um, it is currently at about 90, 90, two degrees and so and then while you're doing this you're going to gently move the curds around oops my thermometer is falling over now you can kind of start to see the pieces of curd separating from the whey you don't want to stir it too vigorously because the curd will break up and when it gets to 105 then we're going to start stirring it a little bit longer um, for two to five minutes and at two to five minutes, well you can decide whether you want to stir it for two minutes or up to five minutes based on how firm you want it to be. The longer you stir it, the more it will firm up. So once it gets to 105, then we start stirring it for the desired amount. So the next step is to pour off the way, but what I do first, just because the pot's kind of heavy, is I take a slotted spoon and I scoop the way or I scoop the curds out and put them into a ceramic bowl. All right, I'm over at my sink now, and you can see here that um, the curds and then the, there is some whey in there. Even though I separated the curds out, whey continues to come out of the curds. And so you have to keep pouring off the whey. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this through a little strainer I have, making sure not to let all the, the big blob of curds fall out. And put that back in here. Okay, so the next part of it um, is to put this in the microwave at one minute, that is going to force more of the whey to come out of the curds. And this is the point at which you're going to need your gloves. So while it's in the microwave, heating for one minute, put your gloves on. All right, so here's what it looks like, and, and there you can see some of the liquid moving around. So at this point, with my gloves on, because it's hot, I'm going to kind of fold the curds, just gently fold them, which will separate them from a little bit more from the whey. And then you don't want to do this like you don't want to vigorously knead the curds, but you want to just fold it just enough to kind of help some of the whey come out. And at this point, you're also going to add in some cheese salt if you're doing that. Um, I, the recipe that I follow calls for putting in a teaspoon, but I have found that uh, that always seems a little bit salty. And so I'm putting in about three quarters of a teaspoon and I'm just kind of sprinkling it over the top. And then I just sort of knead it. I mean, not really knead it, I fold it into, I'm just gently 
folding the cheese salt into the cheese. And while I'm doing this, there's some more liquid, there's some more of the whey that's coming out. And then the next step is to microwave it for an additional 30 seconds before stretching it. Okay, so more of the whey came out. And now, um, if, you, if you are concerned about the temperature, you can check it and it should be 135 degrees. You just kind of stretch it like taffy, fold it over. The more you stretch the cheese, the more it, uh, firm it will be. So if you want it to be nice and soft, then just do it a few times. You should notice that it starts turning kind of shiny. And at this point, it's a good idea to kind of take a nice little bite of it. Mmm, that's really good. I think the saltiness is perfect. It's a little, probably needs, I don't know, maybe I would have put a whole teaspoon in, but I think you just kind of have to see what your own preferences are. But now you're gonna turn it into the shape you want it to be. Some people will braid it. I typically just form it into kind of a log. So the next step is to be is to submerge it in some cool water, 50 degree water. And it's gonna sit in the 50 degree water for about five minutes. So the last thing you're gonna do is add some ice so that you have an ice bath here. And don't skip this step. There are several reasons why you wanna do it. It cools the cheese down. It helps it to hold onto the shape you've put it in. It preserves the silky texture on the outside and it keeps it from getting grainy. So it needs to sit in the cool water for five minutes and then an ice bath for another 15 minutes. And the last thing you're going to do is take the cheese out of the, the ice bath, kind of pat it, dry, pat it with a paper towel, just lightly, just so it's not wet. And then you want to just wrap it up in some plastic wrap and keep it in the fridge. And it'll keep in the fridge for, for about a week, so, but it probably won't even last a day. Yeah, it's that good. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll give this mozzarella cheese a try. Uh, stay tuned on my channel, My Flex Staff Home, for another video that I'm gonna do where you can make a cheese that really just requires milk and vinegar. Can you believe it? And a little salt. But So I will show you that one in an upcoming video, but let me know how this goes for you. Be sure to check out the New England Cheese Making Company it, um, linked in the space below and uh, Take care, you guys. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon on YouTube will let you know when I upload new videos. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye.